Animations in Unity can be quite complicated, but don't worry, in this video we are going to have only two animations that we will apply to our hands based on our inputs. So by the end of this video we are going to have these animated hands. Let's get started. Back to Unity. If we want to make our hands animate, we are going to need an animator controller. It basically controls which animation to play. We can define it by uh, our C Sharp script. So let's create one. So at the VR hands folder, just right click. Create an uh, animation controller and call it left hand animation controller. On our prefab, we have an animator component and we need to drag the animator controller to the controller field. Yeah, then double click it and it's going to open up the animator window. Here, as you can see, there's a parameter tab and what it's basically doing, we can specify a float, an integer, a bool and a trigger. And with this four variable, we can we can control which animation to play. So we are going to need two float values, one for the grip value and one for the trigger value. So let's create them. Call it grip. Create another one and we're going to call it trigger. In this case, we are going to use a blend tree. And with blend trees, we can smoothly interpolate animation based on our parameters. So to do that, just right click. Create a state and from new blend tree. So double click it. And right now it's a one dimensional blend type, but we got a grip and a trigger. So it's going to be a two dimensional one. We are going to use the 2D freeform Cartesian. And as you can see at the parameters, there's two grip right now. So we need to set one of them to trigger. And at the motion tab, here we're going to put our animations what we want to blend between so we are going to need four so just add four at the plus icon and add motion field so our grip and trigger values are going to be between zero and one so at the position x and y we have to set it between zero and one so first we are going to use the idle animation when we don't have any movement at zero zero position so we just need to open this left hand default animation FBX and, and drag the left hand idle animation to the first one. In the second one, we want to do a pinch animation and I'm going to set the Y position to one and leave the X position at zero. So at that position, we are going to pinch. So just drag that animation to that field. And the third, when we want, want to grip, we are going to set the X position to 1 and leave the Y position at 0. And also drag the grip animation to the field. At the last one, we have to decide what happens when we using the grip button and also the trigger button as well. I think the best thing to do in this case is just use the grip animation because that feels more natural. So let's drag the grip animation to the fourth one as well. And the position X and Y, remember in this case, we are going to have our grip and trigger parameters at one. So just set the position X and Y. That's why we have to set the position X and Y to one. Okay. So at the trigger, just define it zero. And as you can see, uh, we are at the idle animation right now. So if you just modify the grip value, you can see the red dot is moving towards the position X1. And also if you move the trigger, it moves along the Y axis. And if you look at it, the blend tree, if I move the grip, you can see the which animation is started to glow a little. In this case, it's the left hand grip. If I do the trigger, then it slowly interpolates to the left hand pitch animation. So we are going to use this in our C sharp script based on our inputs. So to do that, we need to find out which actions we can use in our input action asset. So to find the input action asset, we just go to the assets, samples, XR interaction toolkit, the version you have, uh, starter assets, and you can find that the XR default input actions. So if we double click it and open it, we can see the control schemes and at the action maps, we just need to select the XRI left hand interaction because we are going to interact. And then 
we have the select and activate action. The select is basically the grip on our controller and the activate is the trigger. As you can see at the action type, it's a button, which is only able to return a Boolean if it's pressed or not. But as you can see, there's a select value and activate value as well, which is a value type and it's going to return a float value. So we are going to use these two actions. So you can close this now, go back to the scene and in the assets folder, go back to the VR hand and select the left hand prefab. So we are going to add the C sharp script to it. Call it, call it hands animation, new script and create an add. Double click it and it will open it. We are going to use the new input system. So type using unity engine dot input system delete the start function we are not going to use this one now we need to read these values from our controllers so to do that we are need a reference for the input actions we could use a public variable but i like to use serialized field private variables because then we don't have access to these variables from other scripts and i just like to keep these variables less accessible so to do that i'm going to use a serialized field private and input action reference and i'm going to call this one a grip reference in the update function i'm going to read the float value so to do that just uh, type grip reference that action dot read value and it's going to be a float and now it's a good practice to store it uh, in a separate variable. So to do that, just type uh, float and I'm going to call it grip value. And now we have access to this value. So to test this, the easiest way is to write these values to the console. To do that, we, so we need to use the debug.log and I'm going to insert the grip value here. So if you go back to Unity and click on the left hand controller, you can see at the grip reference, we don't have any input action reference. So we just need to select the XRI left hand interaction select value. Just remember to use the select value so it will read the float value instead of a Boolean. Select that and enter play mode. As you can see, if I press the button, it changes values between zero and one. So if you go back to our script, the only thing that left us to do is to connect the animator component to the script and, and set the animator's grip parameter to the grip value. So to do that, we can delete the debug.log and we are going to need a animator reference. To do that, again, serialize field, private animator and call it and animator. Okay, if we go back to Unity and select the left hand prefab, we have to drag the animator component to the hand animator field. Go back to the script and here we are going to set the grip parameter to the grip value. Just type in hand animator dot set float. And in this method, we need a string name, which is going to be the grip and the float value, which is going to be the grip value. Just bear in mind, because it's a string, we need to have the exact name of the parameter. So the, the best practice is just copy it from the animator's parameters tab. So I'm just going to copy the grip, go back to the script, going back to the script and I'm just gonna paste it. And comma, we are going to insert the float value, which is the grip value. So go back to Unity and hit play. So as you can see, now it's working perfectly. So the next thing is we have to set up the pinch animation. To do that, go back to the script and we are going to do basically the same thing. So I'm going to need another input action reference and I'm going to call this trigger reference. And at the update function, we are going to do exactly the same. We just copy and paste it. And in the update function, I'm just going to copy and paste these two lines as well. I'm going to rename it trigger value and I'm going to set that to trigger reference. Now the hand animator, we are going to use the trigger. So just remember to copy it. Trigger and we have to change this to trigger value. One last thing we need to do, go back to Unity, select the left hand prefab 
and we have to we have to have a reference for the trigger button we are going to use the xri left hand interaction activate value so just select that and and start play mode uh, both of the animations working perfectly and if i use the trigger and the grip button together it's just going to grip so if we want to animate the right hand as well uh, the easiest way is just duplicate the left hand controller rename it right hand controller select the right hand prefab and drag it to the controller field double click it and we already have the grip and trigger parameters so open the blend tree and the blend tree we are going to change the motions to the right hand animations so to do that just open up these fbx files and the first one is the idle then we have the pinch animation and we are going to use the right hand animation in the last two positions as well okay select the right hand prefab we need to add the script we just made so add the hands animation script and drag the animator to the and animator field and again on the grip and the trigger we just need to select the xri right hand select value and for the trigger we need the right hand activate value and that should be it and that's it both of the hands are working perfectly now so that was the basics of the hand animation in our next video we are going to make our character move and also we are going to finally do some level design as well if you're interested make sure you hit that subscribe button and you won't miss my future videos and see you in the next one.